Namaskar Yogi. Welcome to your practice. We are officially in Virgo season and in the spirit of this earth element ruling, we'll be focusing on our earthly human body today. Now I know that we always focus on our body in our yoga practice, but specifically we're going to focus on our spine and neck being in alignment, moving all six ways to come into that alignment. And we're also focusing on more expansion within our joint spaces where these bones all connect. Virgo is a sign ruled by the planet Mercury as well as the cosmic body of Chiron. In astrology, this asteroid is known as the wounded healer, and it represents our triggers, emotional wounds, and maybe sensitivities that we have as we navigate this lifetime. When we think about Chiron in the world of yoga, we can start to focus on our health and our wellness as much as our emotional and energetic attunement and harmony. We know that when our spine is aligned physically, that we feel more physically well. And we also know that when our chakras or energy centers are in alignment, we feel more emotionally well or stable. Virgo energy can be very anxious and very concerned with perfectionism. And this causes a lot of angst and stress in the body. In order to calm that energy down today, we'll create more space so that we have more room to breathe. When we can breathe a little bit deeper, we can calm those tornadic thoughts, those vrittis of the mind, and we can start to settle our energy back down towards the earth where we need to focus right now. Focusing on this grounding energy in your practice helps you to turn on a mindset of rest and relaxation. You're a little bit more calm and in control of your mind, and you also feel like your systems are working in better order. When we have this parasympathetic nervous system response turned on in our body, we are more prone to rest and sleep. We are more prone to concentrate, focus, and even meditate better. We also digest better, not only the food and drink that we consume, but everything else that we take on during our day. This could be things like the electrical or magnetic waves that we get approached with. It could be energy or frequencies that we take on. Maybe it's just something that we're bombarded with all of a sudden that causes a little bit of shock or internal trauma. When we're in this parasympathetic nervous system state, we learn to process everything that we've experienced so that we can start fresh and reset as we approach our next day. We also, in this state, are more prone to fertility and reproduction. And this isn't just in the sense of conceiving a human being and, and perpetuating the human race. This is also about your own ability to conceive in any way, any idea that you're trying to bring forth into the world, anything that you're trying to manifest, dreams that you're trying to make come true. It all comes down to you being in this more relaxed state. So let's let ourselves ground today. Let's sink into a deeper state of calm and let's give ourselves the opportunity to breathe a little deeper. When you're ready, we will start in a comfortable seat, Sukhasana pose. And that doesn't have to be a cross-legged position. You might sit with your legs out in front of you. You might sit with a wall behind you or in a chair if you need a little bit of back support. Now, this isn't a chair yoga practice and this won't be a practice with supported props, but if you need that just to drop in right now and have a little bit more comfort along the way, feel free to set yourself up for that opportunity. You can sit on the knees if that feels better for you, or you can just find whatever supports your posture.
As you begin to settle into your easy seated pose, let your hands come to your legs with the palms facing down and start to close your eyes once you feel ready. Let yourself feel the connection of tailbone to the earth or to your yoga mat, reminding you that you're present in your practice. As you find more presence with your body, with the earth, with gravity, maybe also find a deeper connection with your breath. Really feel the inhales moving into your body and really allow the exhales to leave your body. Maybe as you breathe here, you also move the breath into different places in your body. Can you breathe into your sides? Maybe into low back and hip spaces. Maybe more into your belly and pelvic floor. Maybe you breathe all the way around your body at the same time. Simply breathe and relax here. Ground yourself in to the present moment and begin to harmonize your mind, your body, your breath, and your energy. Let everything be here now with the breath. As you continue to breathe, maybe also notice how you feel in your mind, in your energy, in your body, and taking notice without judgment, simply observing so you know where to focus more in your practice today, so you know where to breathe in your practice today so you know where to go deeper or back off and modify and be more gentle. Let this practice be a personal journey that supports your wellness, that supports your inner peace. Let yourself be in control. Take maybe one or two more breaths here to simply ground deeper. And when you feel ready, start bringing your hands together at your heart space. As you turn your gaze towards the ground, blink your eyes open to adjust back to the light and inhale, sweep your arms up and overhead. Join at the top, exhale, pull back down to your heart. We'll do this two more times. After this third breath, take a moment to fold over your legs with more of a flat back. So really reaching out, walking out. If it feels good, you can let the head go and relax here. Press back through your spine. Really feel the stretch through your low back. Maybe breathe more into the back side of your body where your lungs expand the most. And take one more deep breath here. On your exhale, begin to walk your hands back and all the way behind, either fingers facing your body or out to the sides. Press through your arms, your triceps, your shoulders. Begin to lift your navel and heart. Draw the navel to spine so the belly doesn't stick out. We really want to arch here, maybe lift through the neck, the chest. You can even look back slightly to stretch the throat. Just don't let the head go all the way back. It is quite heavy. Take a deep breath, return to neutral, and let's switch the cross in the legs if the legs are crossed, or maybe you just sit a different way, adjusting your seat. Once again, we are going to fold, so just start leaning forward wherever that is. Even if the legs are out or you're on your knees, you can still walk out into this seated fold. 
breathing into the backside, maybe noticing any differences here. One more breath and slowly walk back and behind again, just like before. Open up your heart, arch the spine, maybe even press your pelvis forward more. Take a deep breath in, exhale, return to neutral. From here, we're just going to look left and right. You might want to keep your arms relaxed by your sides just to help with that alignment of shoulders over hips. So remembering that the neck moves independently of the spine. We wanna make sure that we're getting a lot of rotation movement there. Let's do maybe one more each way. And we'll end up looking to the right and just holding it. Now the spine will want to twist, the shoulders will want to move. Let's try to stay in that posture with spine aligned and only let movement come from the neck and head. Even the eyes can look back more over your shoulder to help with that. Maybe to encourage yourself not to twist, you pull your left shoulder back in a way the more you look to the right. Take one more breath here. Exhale, release, and slowly move to the other side, noticing how you twist, keeping the spine still, moving from neck and head, maybe even pulling right shoulder back more, breathing into that opening through your neck, throat chakra is heavily connected to Virgo season. Take a deep breath. Return into center. Let's do a few shoulder rolls just to work anything out there. And whenever you feel ready, we'll also take a side bend, reaching right arm overhead, walking the left arm out. Just as far as you can go, pressing hips away from hands, keeping ribs nice and open, maybe changing your gaze, looking a different direction. Take a breath into your right side. On the exhale, release and switch your side bend, exploring here, noticing any differences or where you need to adjust and breathe. Inhale. Exhale, return to center. We'll now take a seated twist, right hand across, left hand behind. Inhaling to hold or get taller. Exhale to twist deeper or hold there. So we can really work with our breath here on the twist and just like we did before, maybe we can even work with the neck, the head, the gaze. Create more space in the twist. Encourage left arm to go back as you look to the left. Inhale, exhale, release, twist to the opposite side, left hand across, right hand behind, maybe looking more over the shoulder or changing the gaze. Now I noticed just now that my knee wanted to lift up on the opposite side, on that left side. So if you're doing that as well, maybe encourage the knee and the hip to really stretch out, ground in. One more breath here and slowly return to center. Let's flip over to tabletop, hands and knees pose. And from there, we're going to our first downward facing dog, tucking the toes, lifting the hips, and moving around in this first dog, just exploring, creating more space. You might let your head go. You might do some slow movement with your head and neck here. Maybe you're just focusing on drawing the navel to the spine. Take another breath or two and start to find stillness in your dog, just grounding it in. We'll slowly start to walk our hands back towards our feet and roll up to standing, really stacking the vertebrae, taking your time to align. At the top, doing a few shoulder rolls back down and away as you settle into your mountain pose, Tadasana. We want our feet under hips, 
about hip distance or maybe slightly wider. We want toes facing forward. We want the legs to be soft, knees are relaxed, glutes are relaxed. And whenever you feel ready, just relax your arms by your sides again. We'll move the neck looking up and down. We're also going to move with the breath here. As you inhale, look up. As you exhale, look down. to create space here. Let's do maybe one more each way. We're going to end with our chin at our chest and hold it there. And mindful not to roll shoulders forward. Keep the shoulders back and down. Maybe even roll them back and away if you need to remind yourself. Also, as you're feeling more tension in the back of your body here, make sure not to let it go into the lower body. We keep the glutes and the hips soft. One more breath with your chin at chest and then roll one ear towards your shoulder. Circle back through your chest to the other side. Continue to roll side to side each way, working out anything left throughout our neck and our shoulder area. Let's do one more each way. Once you feel balanced, return to center. And again, just a few shoulder rolls if you need it. Now we've spent a lot of time in our neck, our upper body, our shoulders, even twisting through the spine, but we need to go out to these extremities as well. So let's start with our wrists, closing the fingers over the thumbs to make a fist, begin to roll your fists around in circles. Make sure that you keep your shoulders relaxed. Make sure that this tension doesn't go somewhere else in the body. Keep the lower body relaxed. You can even just stay loose, step with things, whatever you need. Also make sure that you're circling both directions here with those fists. Let's take a few more circles here and then switch out, making the thumbs move over to the tops of the fingers, continuing to roll your fists around and maybe noticing if that changes things up, if you find some new places to open. I'm getting some pops in my wrists all of a sudden that I didn't get before. We will do this both directions as well, just balancing out the energy. Maybe one or two more breaths while you're circling. And then open up your hands and begin to circle your hands around. Now you can get into the wrists. You can also get into your elbows a little bit. Just let yourself circle, stay loose. Let those fingers wiggle around in the process. Make sure the elbows get some love. And when you're ready, we're just going to circle the thumbs. Those thumbs do a lot of work these days with our smartphones, clicking on our keyboards, gaming, driving, lots of uses for those thumbs. So let's work them out. And then just a little bit of jazz finger there to let everything go, shake it out if you need to. And then inhale, reach overhead, join the palms, Exhale, draw hands to heart in this prayer hand, also known as Anjali Mudra. From there, we'll open from the bottom, layer the back of the hands against each other, maybe all the way up to the back of the wrist. And again, you're just exploring, rolling around, pressing, finding some massage through those tight spaces, through the tops of the hands. They get tight from holding our phones, gripping our steering wheels, all of those lovely things. If you spend time carrying heavy things with your hands, they will take a toll. So let's just work that out. Maybe take one more breath here. And then again, release the arms, sweep overhead, inhale, join at the top, pass through your heart and fold all the way down, letting go in your standing fold now, Uttanasana. 
Maybe you're bending the knees here, softening. Maybe you straighten the legs for more. Wherever you are, try to lean closer to your toes, even if it's just a little bit. Keeping the navel towards spine to support low back and create more length. Take one more breath in. Slowly roll back up to standing. And once you realign in your mountain pose, reach your arms out in front of you nice and slow until you end up overhead. Now mindful not to bring shoulders to ears. We want to relax that. You can even bend your elbows a little bit if you need space. We're moving into Anahatasana, standing heart opener, opening the energetic center of our chakras. We press through our heels to reach up and get a little taller. We keep our glutes soft as we lean back. This may be enough for you and it may be too much for you. Back off if you need to, but let yourself open your heart here. Navel drawing up and in, lifting the spine, taking a few deep breaths across the heart center, really nourishing this energetic center where all of the other meridians stem from. Take one more inhale. On your exhale, release back to your prayer hand on Jali Mudra at your heart. Inhale, sweep both arms overhead. On your exhale, let your left arm drop down, right arm reaches over with palm facing forward. Getting back into our side bend now, pressing hips away from hands, maybe exploring the gaze again. Left arm is really heavy wherever you are. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, reach both arms up. Another inhale as you reach deeper. Exhale, move to the other side. As you settle, right arm is heavy. Left palm is facing forward, the ribs are open. Explore your gaze for a few more breaths. Inhale. Exhale, return to center. This time, inhale both arms overhead. On the exhale, you're going to swan dive, arms nice and wide, bend the knees if you need to. Make your way all the way back down into your fold. Once you arrive, bind your elbows. Let yourself hang out here, and if you'd like a little rock or sway to release, go ahead and explore that now. Letting yourself just loosen up, let go. And try switching the bind in your elbows. Take a few more breaths here. And release your arms, slowly roll back up to standing, stacking your spine in alignment just like you did before. We're eventually going to step wide across our mats, turning the toes and knees out to the corners. When you're ready, come down into a supported half squat, hands on your thighs, and again, don't collapse into your shoulders, really press your ears and shoulders away from each other. We're just gonna take a moment to explore our hip spaces, move it all around, let it feel good here. Remember that we're focusing on our joints as much as our spine and neck. And this hip space is a ball and socket joint with a lot of range of motion. So really see what you can discover there as you hang out. Maybe take one or two more breaths and then settle in at center. Let your left shoulder drop down and in as you press into your left leg. Begin to look to your right in a twist and you can even get the head more into it or maybe play with the angle of the head. Keep pressing into your twist. One more inhale. On your exhale, return to center. Start dropping into your other side. Exploring here, noticing what you discover. Maybe moving around with it a little bit. One more breath. Return to center. Really press into your legs, again getting tall. 
take an inhale on your exhale, press all the way back up, and then take your time stepping back into the center of your mat. We're settling back into our mountain pose. We'll take three deep breaths overhead, pulling hands to heart, really grounding back into our center reminding ourselves to focus on the alignment of our spine on the harmonizing of our left and right side that masculine feminine energy after this third breath we're moving to balance work with tree pose vrikasana start to balance on your left foot turn out from your right this might be enough otherwise slide your heel over your ankle or maybe challenge yourself by lifting your foot off the ground and placing it on your calf below your knee if you need more of a challenge you go above the knee but not on the knee. So be mindful of where you place your foot and explore the hands. There's many different trees in the world. We can make a lot of different yogi trees as well. The key is that we're breathing, really balancing, really feeling the rooting of our right foot into the earth, feeling that grounding like a single leg mountain pose. One more inhale. Exhale, slowly release. Take your time moving to the other side. It might be a completely different world here. There is no judgment in each of our sides. We just spend the same amount of time. We're fair. Again, explore the tree, explore your hands. Keep breathing with your drishti, your focus, looking at something that's not moving either eye level or out in front of you below eye level. We've got maybe two more deep breaths. And when you're ready, slowly make your way back out. Ground into your right foot again. Hands on the hips for a little bit of support. You're going to pick up your left knee and flex your foot here. It's like you're sitting into it. Get really heavy into the right heel. Really feel the lift through the hip flexor, not just your thigh. And when you're ready, take an inhale. On the exhale, Extend your leg, push through your heel, and try to float your leg off the ground. But if you need to tap it, tap it down. Inhale, pick everything back up. Exhale, extend and either tap or float that flexed foot. Good, let's do two more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, press. Working on hip and knee mobility. One more. Now, as we extend out, we stay here and we start rolling our ankle around. Be mindful to soften your right knee. Also, make sure to circle both directions through your ankle. You can take your hand somewhere else if you wanna play around with your balance. Let's do maybe one or two more deep breaths and then return back into that single leg mountain now on your left foot taking your right knee up, flexing your foot, lifting out of your low belly, out of your hip flexor space, taking an inhale on the exhale, pressing out, flexing the foot, either tapping down or floating. Inhale, pick it back up, really press through the opposite foot to get that pick up. Exhale, press out. We've got two more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, press last time from here we'll explore ankle rolls again softening left leg if you need to create a little bit of space also helps you to balance as you're moving your right leg around and circle both directions just a few more breaths And release back down. Let's shake it out with Ganesha pose or Ganesh swings, also known as elephant trunk swings. Imagine your arms are big elephant trunks and you're just stepping with it with your big elephant legs, clearing out space. You might hear some back pops or body pops. It might just feel good here. You can also harmonize the brain by tapping each side of your body in a couple of different places. Just to remind yourself that you're here, you're present, you're stomping on your mat, you're still in your practice, and you're taking care of this earthly human body.
Let's begin to slow back down now. Start to ground back into your mountain pose. And then take your toes and knees out to the corners, preparing for a squat. As you lower into your malasana, maybe hands are on the legs. Maybe you're down to the elbows. Maybe you can go down deeper, hips in between the knees. Maybe the heels are lifted. Maybe they're not. Maybe the hands are on the ground. Maybe they're not. You find the squat or garland pose that works the best for you to help you keep your flat back, to really release any tension in the hip spaces. And for you to help clear your mind, squats should be a nice release, moving us into our root chakra, helping us to settle any other energy that might be whirling around our head or upper body spaces. Let's take one more deep breath here and then come out to tabletop again, hands and knees. And this time we'll stay here. So make sure that wrists are under shoulders, knees are under hips, fingers are really spreading wide. We're moving into our cat and cow. The cow pose first, tucking toes, inhale, look out and up. Pull your shoulders back to your hips. Pull your hips toward your shoulders, meeting in the middle of your back best you can. Maybe press through hands and knees to arch the spine more. Take an inhale. Exhale, start to press and round your spine, flatten your feet, and continue moving nose towards tailbone and tailbone towards nose at the center of your core, just meeting in the middle best you can. And one more inhale here, one more exhale here, and then on your next inhale, transition to cow. Tuck your toes, look out and open. Exhale, go to cat, flatten the feet, look under and round. We'll continue moving back and forth, more of a rhythm now, finding the space that we're creating with each side of the pose. We've got maybe one or two more rounds here. Keep working with your cow and cat. And whenever you feel ready, complete your cat back stretch, return to a neutral spine, and begin to take your left leg out and behind with toes on the ground. Just pressing back through your heel, maybe looking under as you relax your head. As you look under, also reaching out through your neck pressing shoulders away. Find more length all the way through your spine. Take one more breath here, and as you release, pick up your foot, cross it over to the right side, set your toes back down. Begin to look around your right shoulder towards your foot. Keep pressing your back foot away, enhancing the side bend on your left rib cage. Breathe into that side bend to create even more space. And when you're ready, slowly return back into your tabletop. Let's do the other side, right foot behind, toes on the ground, pressing back, getting a nice calf stretch, maybe stretching through the back of your leg or even all the way up to your shoulder. Sometimes this connects to our whole posterior chain. One or two more deep breaths here. And then slowly pick up your foot, cross it over, land your toes to the left, look to the left and continue to open that side bend, breathing into the right side of your rib cage. Inhale, exhale, return to neutral. Let's twist our spine now with thread the needle. On an inhale, reach your left arm out and up. On an exhale, bring it underneath. Maybe you just go to the elbows, looking over to the right. Maybe you can start to reach on through, lowering shoulder down. If you can, relax your head or lower your head and your ear to the earth. Right arm can explore. It might press into the ground, might reach overhead. It might wrap around your back. Just let your left side relax wherever you are. Take one more breath here. 
Exhale, unwind, reset wrists under shoulders, and then take your right arm out as you inhale. Exhale, thread the needle under, relax down, maybe explore with your left hand. It could do something different than the right. We have these two different sides in our body, so let yourself be curious. See where you can create the most space. Deep breath in, exhale, unwind, and we'll go back to our downward facing dog. Just settling in for a moment, finding more stillness once you arrive. Really encouraging heels towards the earth, chest towards your thighs, head relaxing. From here, we are rolling forward into a plank pose. Now, maybe that plank is on your knees. Maybe it's full out. We're only here for a moment. Inhale again. Exhale, shift forward, lower through to Chaturanga, and then transition into a Sphinx pose. So we're bringing our elbows out underneath our shoulders, really feeling this lift up and out with the spine, just like the Sphinx of Egypt, just like a cat settling here. We want to pull our chest open, shoulders back, maybe press into the arms for more length in the spine. Also, if you're holding tension in your lower body, just relax, shake it out if you need to. Let everything go. Navel's lifting to spine and heart as well. One more deep breath in. On your exhale, release all the way down, elbows wide. Take a moment to breathe into your low back. Just releasing any tension you may have created. We're going to stay here on the belly, but we're pulling one leg up like a tree pose. So you might wanna set up your arms like a sphinx again, and then bring your right leg forward. Now the knee might go higher than the hip, so make sure it's in alignment with the hip. And then you could either bring your foot close to you with a pointed toe, or maybe a flexed foot moving out, more like a half frog. I'm going to let you choose which you do today in your practice and you even might do one side differently than the other but once you feel ready you're going to again bend the elbows let yourself rest breathe into your low back here you might even notice your low back settling the more you relax Let's do one more nice deep breath in and out and slowly extend your leg out underneath you again, moving to the other side, it's pulling your knee up, maybe lining it up if you need to, deciding if you want to flex your foot, take it out at 90 degrees, or if you want to point your toes and pull in closer like a typical tree pose. Remember that it could be different. Let yourself settle. You might want to change things up as you settle even. The key is that we're relaxing and releasing our low back. Many times we don't stay on our belly in yoga, but it's so beneficial to release any tension in our backside. So give yourself maybe one or two more deep breaths here and slowly move your leg out underneath you again. From here, we're going to lay all the way out on our belly and we're working into a prone version of crescent moon. So we want to walk our hands more over to the left side and begin to settle there. Now we are going to go all the way out. Hopefully my microphone won't click too bad here. We want to rest. If we can, we can even walk our feet also over to the left side. And you could even anchor by taking left foot on top, or sorry, right foot on top of the left. So outside foot over, but you don't have to do that. You can just relax. 
Feel that side bend stretch. One more breath. And then walk your feet and your hands back to center. Take a nice deep breath in and out at your center and begin to walk your hands over to the other side. Maybe your feet as you settle. Now on this side, I can't even get close to putting my foot on top of the leg. So that just goes to show you how we are different on each side. Make it your own practice. Take one more breath. Take your time coming back into neutral and we're going to move into a twist now. So we want to take our right hand, bend it like a chaturanga arm. Left hand goes all the way out to the side where we'll begin to roll towards that left side, relaxing our head. The right arm helps us push there. Top leg is just going to reach out and over. Now you might tap the ground behind you. You might just hover your leg and play around. You can also change the angle of the extended arm, moving the hand and arm slightly up, slightly down. Play around with that to get a good front of the shoulder and chest stretch. This is also great for our rotator cuff. So we're focusing on the joint spaces and the shoulder joint doesn't get a lot of love with the rotator cuff. This is one of the unique yoga poses where we can access that. So let's take advantage now. Maybe take a few more deep breaths here. Whenever you feel ready, slowly roll yourself back in, pull your left arm in, extend your right arm out, begin to roll to your right side, relaxing your head, pick up your top foot, begin to explore. It might feel like a different world. Just let yourself be curious. Maybe move the angle of your arm up and down. a few more breaths here to open your rotator cuff. Slowly release back into center and from here we'll just press to child's pose. Take a moment to again just relax. This is a way for us to get a little bit of a fold while we're on our belly or in that prone position. This is also a great place to help us turn on that relaxation response. Just the pressure of the forehead to the mat helps turn that on. But if you can't make it all the way down, you can always stack your fists and bring the ground up to you and still create that pressure onto your forehead here. You can also take this time to maybe roll your head and your forehead around, either across your forehead or temple to temple if you're all the way on the ground. This activates vagus nerve even more, which is responsible for turning on that parasympathetic nervous system response we talked about at the beginning of practice. This is also nice for our neck and shoulders. One more deep breath and relax. From here, we're just going to flip it right on over to our back, coming now into our supine position. Once you arrive, hug your knees into your chest and roll your head left and right again. Now we're massaging the back of our head, getting more into that vagus nerve. So this is a cranial nerve that runs from about the middle of our forehead, that third eye point, all the way up through the top of our head, down the back of our head, down our neck, down our spine, all the way out near the colon area. It is our longest cranial nerve. So when we put all this pressure on our back, our neck, our spine, back of the head, we are constantly telling our mind and body to relax. 
Once you feel centered, just return looking right up towards the sky or the ceiling. You're gonna release your legs down about hip distance, knees are bent, feet are on the ground. We are setting up for a couple of bridge poses today. You wanna start with your arms down by your sides, and when you're ready, begin to bring your navel to your spine, slowly roll your low back off the mat, begin to press your knees and shins forward, keep your glutes relaxed and then lift your heart to go deeper you might walk your shoulders under more or maybe interlace your hands behind you really press your heart to the wall behind you as you encourage your knees and your shins to the wall in front of you maybe lift a little higher on your next inhale on your exhale slowly release and lower down when you arrive on your mat, step your feet wide and begin to wipe your knees out side to side. It's working into our hip spaces. Again, exploring that ball and socket joint. We are going to do one more bridge pose. When you're ready, set up your feet, toes forward, hip distance. Maybe this time you take hold of the edges of your mat. Whenever you're ready, roll up into your bridge, keep your glutes relaxed, and when you reach the top, if you're holding your mat, pull on it to go deeper. You can walk your shoulders under more, you can walk your feet closer, you can really get into this nice deep back bend or heart opener. You might even be able to step your heels onto your fingers or fingertips. You might be able to actually grab around your ankles. Let's take two more deep breaths. On this last breath, maybe lift a little higher. On the exhale, slowly roll down. Take the feet wide and wiper out your legs again. This is a wonderful way to reset the spine after that deep back bend and just helps to settle everything back into alignment. Let's do one more wiper each way with the legs and then slowly start to extend your legs long. Extend your arms overhead. We're moving into a crescent moon pose again. We'll start by first just walking our upper body over to the left. So pick up your whole upper body, bring it over to the left and set it back down. And then if you want to add your feet, start walking your feet over to the left as well until you make this crescent moon shape. Now again, you could either place the outside leg on top of the inside or the inside leg on top of the outside. One will feel different from the other. You can also grab on to your right wrist to help hold yourself over in this crescent moon shape. You can also just relax here in the side bend. Wherever you are, take a nice deep breath and slowly roll yourself back into center, walk back in, and then pick up your body and walk it over to the opposite side. Same with the feet, settling in. Maybe you grab your left wrist, maybe you stack your feet one on top of the other, that is up to you. Wherever you are, hold and breathe here. One more breath. Bring it back into center. And then slowly hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a little rock as you squeeze. And then gently guide your knees over to the left side. Right arm reaches out, full body spinal twist now looking away from your knees and your left hand can either assist the twist or just reach out and relax. Begin to let gravity take over. Maybe sink into deeper exhales again. One more deep breath. Slowly return to center. Guide your knees over to the opposite twist, looking away, settling in once you feel ready. 
Letting your body slow down, create space. Remember that our twist should always create length in our spine, not compression. One more deep breath. Slowly return to center. Take your ankles and your feet up and begin to roll them around. Flex, point, whatever you need. We've worked a lot on our hip spaces. We've gotten into the knees even, but you can always kind of kick around in the knees here too. Maybe even feel like knee circles. That can be fun to do. Let's get into these lower body joint spaces one final time. Working everything out in this waterfall pose. When you feel ready, bend your knees, place your hands on your kneecaps, guide your knees out in a circle and then back in again. Continue rolling around on your low back. Working out any tension there around sacrum, tailbone, hips, maybe some of those lumbar spaces. Take a few more circles and begin to move your way into your final relaxation pose, your Shavasana. Letting yourself relax, feet spread out to the corners of the mat, shoulder blades underneath you so chest is open, palms facing up. If it's not comfortable to lay on your side, of course you can lay a different way, but let yourself drop in deeper now. Let yourself take deeper exhales compared to the inhales. Finding that deeper connection to gravity, holding you deeper in the present, in your practice. Give yourself this time to simply be here now. Be here with your body. Be here with your breath. Even be with the thoughts that come and go doing your best to settle the winds of the mind as you rest. Invite in that state of relaxation you've worked so hard for. Let yourself breathe into the spaces that you've opened up today. Let yourself settle and soften with each breath out. Take time to notice your spine. Feel as if your spine is growing taller as you relax. Feel the back muscles softening. Feel your hips relax, your shoulders relax. Feel all of your bones begin to settle towards the earth. Notice the joint spaces that you've opened up today. Notice the expansion of your breath as it moves into all of these new spaces. Let yourself be nourished by the prana you receive with each inhale and let yourself surrender to the apana of each exhale. Give yourself permission to fully let go so that you can connect deeply to the earth and recharge reset. Let yourself become a new version every time you complete a practice. Invite this new version of yourself in now who is energetically balanced, who is physically well, who feels happy joyful and in high frequency. 
let yourself become this new version now. Let it integrate as you rest and let yourself absorb all of the other benefits of your practice that have come to you today. Notice all that's happening with this non-doing physically. New paths of flexibility forming, new ways to relax in the mind, more balance, more strength, more alignment and a sensation of feeling centered. Absorb everything that is coming to you now as you simply rest here and let yourself be with the earth a little longer. Give yourself a few more deep breaths. Keeping the eyes closed, just regain control of how you inhale and exhale. Begin to gently move your body, starting with the fingers and the toes, working into wrists and ankles, and then knees and elbows, shoulders and hips. And finally, the whole spine, just reaching arms overhead for a full body stretch. And while you're here, take a good breath in and out. Another breath in when you're ready. On your exhale, hug your knees to your chest. Give yourself a squeeze, reopening your spine, your chakras. Keeping eyes closed as you roll to the side of your choice taking as long as you need here on your side. Once you feel ready, work your way up to a comfortable seat again. Sukhasana pose back where we started today, settling back in with eyes closed, hands palms down on the legs, and just take a moment to find your posture. Feel the alignment of your vertebrae, Feel the stacking of your bones and notice how your muscles can stay relaxed. Let yourself breathe in this supportive posture, also breathing into all of the new spaces that you've opened up today. As you breathe deeply and ground, also scan the body, scan the mind. Breathe away anything that you need to release. Anything that's causing tension one way or another, let it go now. Give yourself permission to move into a perfect state of health and harmony. Begin to bring your hands together at your heart space, continuing to let go if you need to, and also taking this time to reflect on the practice that you just did. Noticing your experience, noticing what you shifted, noticing what you opened and created, and overall simply noticing how you feel.
Whenever you're ready, lift your heart to head. Bow your head to heart, sealing in a gesture of gratitude, showing thanks for this time to slow down and create more peace, showing thanks for our body and our breath and the practice we just explored, showing gratitude for all that we are thankful for. We'll seal it with three cleansing breaths. Inhale, sweep arms overhead. Join at the top, open mouth, exhale, pull to the heart. <sighs> Two more times. <sighs> the light in me honors the light in you. Namaste.